Welcome back to Little Stinkers Podcast, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Cal Jala. Hey, pal. Jacob from Matera. Hey. Danny Dubs. <laughs> All right, guys. I was excited about coming here and reuniting with you guys because we haven't filmed in a couple weeks. John and I were here last week doing the Delphi episode. Jake was in Disney. That's right. Jake, what the fuck, man? I was in Disney. I heard you say that I was at a sex uh, party, and I was not. I was clearly in Disney. I have my shirt to prove it. I have a little Mickey Mouse. You don't think there's Disney-themed sex parties? There's there's no Disney-themed sex parties. This is clearly Disney real merchandise, and I even brought you guys back some souvenirs. That Mickey is filled with used condoms. No, it's actually... <laughs> It's not used condoms. It's filled with uh, popcorn, by the way. A hundred uh, calorie snack Jake. pack. Jake, this is Here's worse than blackface. This is not worse than blackface. Leave what are you doing? I got popcorn. It's, just, it's head is filled with popcorn. It, it's not the popcorn. It's the fucking Mickey what? Mickey chain that you have yeah. and a fucking Disney t-shirt. Jake, you're not supposed to wear Disney t-shirts outside of Disney. Um, Listen, they've converted me fully. I'm... Full Disney guy now. Jake, I mean, that, you're you're in Disney in your brain for the next month after you get back. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Jake, that's wearing a Disney t-shirt outside of Disney. It's like wearing a fucking leather zipper mask to work. <laughs> you have to just throw that shit out as soon as you leave. No, absolutely not. It's a comfy shirt. It has. Yeah, it looks like on. it, man. You know, we had we had <laughs> we had a good time. So please tell me your family has t-shirts and you didn't just buy a daddy t-shirt. No, they they refuse to get t-shirts. <laughs> that just... almost seems more appropriate for a sex party. It says daddy on it, dude. It does, and it's got those fucking cop glasses. Are you supporting the blue right now too? No, I'm not. Is this a statement? <laughs> I'm not taking any stance. This is just a Mickey shirt. You know, it says daddy because I am a daddy. Are you so. supporting the thin Pluto line? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this is Jake. <laughs> I even brought you guys back uh, some souvenirs. Oh, Jake, uh, I love you so much. This man. is um. This is a little set of ears for the gerbils in your bung holes. Oh, <laughs> you little little camera. There we you go. You little sweetheart. So, so hold on. The uh, you little damn sweet the, pea. The small ones for John because I know he has a little guy in there, and uh, the bigger ones for Mike. Oh, uh, thank you, Jake. I know, I know there's <laughs> something big in there for you guys. Oh my God, look at these little. Um, thank you. So what I would do is rub a little peanut butter on your butthole, have it come to the surface, and then that's when you can put the ears on them. That's great advice. Thank you. you. Are. Thank you. And uh, is this handmade? Is this a handmade souvenir? It's a, it's a Disney product. <laughs> you can buy it in the gift shop. It says they have a whole section for ears, and then next to it, it's like ears for your anal gerbils. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sounds more and more like you're at a sex party, Jake. Damn. No, oh, I'm telling you right now, those are registered products of the Disney Corporation. Yeah, you bought these for Icky Mouse. <laughs> He's a disgusting, Jake. Thank you, though. Yeah, don't Thank smell you. Him. Did this yeah. take you the whole flight to make? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing crossword puzzles the whole time. Who are you kidding? Dude, uh, we went to Florida a few weeks ago, and Jake sat next to me on the plane, and he did the largest print Gilmore Girls crossword puzzle <laughs> that I think he had custom made. It was not custom made. Jake. Just like the shirt hasn't been custom made. This was, this was print for fucking... <laughs> yeah, and he still had a magnifying glass on his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he bought he brought the minion magnifying glass to do his goddamn oversized print crossword puzzles. I have uh, I have four puzzles left in that book, so I'm I'm very excited. It wasn't all Gilmore Girls. No, what was it? They had everything, man. They had comedians. That's a good. One. They had You'll musicians. Be good yeah, they had Japanese architecture. Mm -hmm. I don't couldn't name one thing. Philadelphia perverts. Did you find your own name there? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy to see you, buddy. Yeah, happy to see Glad you. Glad you're too. back, man. Did you actually like Disney? I uh, yeah, I loved it. I love it, it too, man. Great. Would you go with me? Oh man, yeah, I would. Yeah, we did already. We I just went. Yeah, I yeah. know, but that was a business trip. I would like to go on our own fruition. You would like to go and not be able to write it off. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, it was awesome. I did everything. I did Space Mountain. I fit on all the rides. What? Fuck yeah! It's like, I mean, I didn't think I was going to fit on anything. Nice. So it was great. Space Mountain, Guardians of the Galaxy. I rode that shit twice. Where uh, was Guardians of the Galaxy? Was, was that Epcot. in uh, Epcot? Yeah. Did you have to sign up on the app? Yeah, you had to do that whole thing. Well, that's that works because then you don't have to waste time waiting in line. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Splash Mountain. Oh, man. I got splashed. You did? So I got so wet. Mm. Jesus Christ. It was a sex party. <laughs> no, it was not a sex party. <laughs> Daddy's so wet. <laughs> I did say that a lot. <laughs> the day. He's got a keychain of him fucking on the log flume. 
I was I was chafing a bit after <laughs> most of his picture was blurred out. <laughs> Don't look at this. Yeah. Uh, did you truly walk around with that Mickey Mouse around your neck the entire time? Uh, not the entire time, but a decent portion. There was popcorn in it. That's got to be so uncomfortable, Jay. Did it come with popcorn in it? Uh, no. No, you snuck it in. <laughs> it's so many. You're allowed to bring popcorn yeah. in. That's actually custom, that's actually a uh, new line of um, accessories <laughs> called Richard Gear. G E A R. You want to see it? I do. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Did you buy this off of a, a guy with a rolling kiosk, or did you go into a store for it? Uh, we, I think we, you know, a kiosk. <sighs> yeah. This is kiosk nice, at Animal Kingdom. This is a nice product. What does this cost? Thirty-five dollars. You know, I think twenty. Yeah. Wow. You know, things are way more reasonably priced than I thought they would be. Jake, that looks like it was made for a retarded rapper. <laughs> <laughs> like a flavor flame type. <laughs> but I love it on you, man. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm see. I'm tucking it into my stomach. All right. Keep it in place. John, you want to flip that motherfucking coin <laughs> More than anything <laughs> <laughs> Alright baby, we're going to talk about the Jokers today I can feel it Let's do it Lady luck, fuck <laughs> You win Sorry dickhead, me and the Disney pervert are having at it Woo! <laughs> Congrats Thank you man Alright boys A special treat tonight are you ready to be introduced to America's oldest serial killers? For real? Notice I said plural. Killers. Killers. Yeah. They're a couple. We're a couple. Ooh. Now only one remains? None remains, brother. <laughs> <laughs> only remains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Ray and Faye Copeland, America's oldest serial killers. Did you know these guys? I didn't. Okay. No, I found out about them doing my damn research. Nice. Oh, uh, brother. Not... Not looking into murder for a few weeks, it really reignited the flame in me. Oh, yeah? You, you're dying for more? You ready to jump back oh, in? Oh, man, I got, I got a bloodthirst that I didn't even know I had. I had to suck on a goddamn raw steak while I was doing my research this week. <laughs> so I wanted, wanted to taste that blood again. Is that why you're so pale? <laughs> if we should go to the urgent care yeah. after this. I have been sleeping upside down, but it's mainly to get the red marks out from under my tits. <laughs> All right, Jake. So we have a couple serial killers. Isn't that sweet that they did that together? It is very Bonnie and Clyde of them. Now they had it. Wait, is this pre Bonnie and Clyde? Would Bonnie and Clyde be considered serial killers? This is eh, maybe, I guess. They use guns, right? but they weren't. They weren't old like these motherfuckers. This was an old couple murder. They were old. Yeah, wow. that's what I said. America's oldest. Did you think old by old timey? Like the first. Yeah. No, old in age, bitch. Oh wow. Wow. Yep. It's like the couple from Up. When they were convicted, <laughs> yeah, these motherfuckers were going down. <laughs> <laughs> by the time they were caught, by the time they were prosecuted, uh, Ray was seventy six, and guess how old Faye was? Sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, make that Mickey Mouse do something Ooh. he shouldn't do to you. <laughs> Turn them backwards. Oh no. No. Oh, Mickey, <laughs> stop it. Stop. Oh boy. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> yeah, that's when you want a Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop playing. All right, so Ray was born uh December thirtieth, nineteen fourteen, and Faye was born August fourth, nineteen twenty one. So he was a little bit older. Mm hmm mm -hmm. How, how much older are you than your wife? Uh, where there's, we were born in the same calendar year. Oh, no way. Mm -hmm. Jake, how about you? Actually, same thing. Yeah, same calendar year. Oh, that's year. sweet. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I was born five months prior to my wife. We were actually delivered by the same OBGYN. Whoa. So because you have a late birthday, te not technically the calendar year, but you're the same age. Yeah, pretty much. For half the year. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping to get a picture with our OBGYN. I think he's dead. I got to look into it more. But if I can get one, uh, my wife and I standing on either side smelling his fingers. So, Dr. Richie, if you're watching this, uh, oh. my wife and I would like to reconnect with you. And I would like to make my initial connection with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ray was born in Oklahoma. I almost said Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> Faye was born in Arkansas. Are those uh, those bordering states? I don't fucking know, man. Look it up on your own time. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to guess yes as well. Uh, I felt pretty bad when I found this out about Ray. Ray's a fourth grade dropout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 
What did she start working in a fucking mine after that? Not far off, man. He started farming because uh, times are so hard. This was during the uh, Great Depression where he was yanked out of school, Jake. Yeah, this is like Dust Bowl. Okay. <laughs> you are right. Yeah. I don't know if Mike's ever heard that term. I do know the term. I just don't know if it lines up with this time period. Oh. Uh, the 30s and 40s. Okay. But we haven't gotten there yet. He just dropped out of fourth grade. And that he did. Oh, still, so, yeah, okay, yeah. so he's so young. 1920s. Right. Yes, he dropped out. This motherfucker Damn. barely got his class picture in his onion sack before they yanked his ass out. He probably didn't even learn cursive yet. He didn't, no. <laughs> yeah, all of his letters are... <laughs> All capital. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good dumb man face, John. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, for the fourth grade education, they made it pretty far in life. They were in their 70s. Yeah. It's impressive. He did. And, and the crazy thing is, he didn't start killing until he was in his 70s. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Until he was an old man. All right. All right. <laughs> Are we cool? <laughs> I don't think so, but get on with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, get this. In fucking 1934. All right, so Ray's fucking 20 years old now, Jake. What do you think he does to fall into bad graces with his father? I mean, he already dropped out of fourth grade, right? Or no, that's Faye. Which one? Which one? No, Ray dropped okay, out. Okay, okay. So grade. then I would. But he didn't say... drop out. He was yanked out. <sighs> Four, twelve. You know what? I'm how, gonna... how could you smite your father? That time. Yeah. Not serve in the army. Drop out of the army. It's a good guess. Well, that's a good guess. I was gonna say like just met, get caught masturbating. <laughs> you were at a sex party, clearly. <laughs> I was not. I was at Disney. <laughs> Jake, we can smell it on you. No, you can't. Yes, we can. All right, so he stole two hogs from his father. That's <laughs> unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> did he sell them or did he eat them? Well, that became a, a, a common grift of his was stealing livestock and uh, trying to turn them around, like flipping these fucking cows and then <laughs> <laughs> gonna bend it over, slap it down, <laughs> smack it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh no! Ooh, damn. Yeah, he was flipping pigs. <laughs> But uh, flipping pigs wasn't the least of his Flipping fucking... pigs and stacking chicken, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, this motherfucker was getting after it. He, uh, life of crime was for him. So shortly after he starts stealing pigs, he starts stealing government checks and forging government checks that weren't meant for him. Yeah. That lands him in his first bit of trouble, Jake. He does a year in county jail for stealing government checks. Did he have to repay what he stole or did he just serve time? I don't know, John. That's a good question. I'm not even going to yell at you for not knowing that. Thank you. That is a good question that I didn't think to look up myself. Thanks. You're making me more confident. All right, good, man. <laughs> and less scared of being curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you boys ever write a bad check? No, I feel like that was like my, the time has passed for that. You can what, always do it. But like you only have. Thirty dollars in your account, and you write for a hundred. Yeah. No, aren't you like fucking yeah. ruined? Don't you like get kicked out of your bank it for doing that? Ruin you, but I'll be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never recovered. True bad boy. I did write a bad check. I can say that. What were the circumstances? Uh, I wrote it to myself. Mm -hmm. I, I was telling you about this, this lame thing. I wrote a. I wrote myself because I saw read that Jim Carrey did it. Or some somebody did it. Oh, the million dollar check. The million dollar check. I wrote myself a million dollar check in 2012, and it was uh, it was up last year. You tried to cash it at Disney, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so you could buy that fucking that fucking yeah. Mickey real doll between your legs. Yeah, they're gonna come after me for this thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I didn't try to cash it. You still got it in your wallet? No, not in my wallet. I wouldn't keep it in my wallet. Ready to keep it, your asshole? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's up there with the gerbils. Let's see it. <laughs> Will you sign it over to cash, and then I'll try to cash it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have it in 20s, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that plan didn't work out. <laughs> no, it's all right. Yeah. But, brother, what are you, 35? Yeah. Oh, you still got plenty of time. Nah, do I? I believe You're halfway that. there. By the time yeah. you're 70, <laughs> you will have made $1 million in your life. <clears throat> wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. It's adorable that you think I'm making it to 70, but I that, appreciate oh, you. you that was the joke. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I remember writing that was bad was uh, the night of Game 5 in 2008 World Series. <laughs> the fact that you can relate your crimes to <laughs> sport games. 
Yeah, I had already spent all my money on on beer and champagne that I was keeping cold for three fucking days because the game kept getting continued. So by the time part two of game five rolled around, I had no money left. But the plan was to save my Budweiser and my champagne that was in my apartment for after the game, after the Phillies won, which I planned on. So I had nothing left. I wanted to go to the bar to watch the game. So I went to the Walmart across from Kevin Michaels and Glenn Olden. And uh, I'm like, just play it cool. Just play it cool. You can get 40 bucks back, cash back. Just play it cool, play it cool. Bounce a check, got my 40 bucks. Kevin Michaels had, I believe, 250 Budweiser drafts for the game. So you got... I got my fill, bro. Blind drunk for $40. I did, yeah. The Phillies wow. fucking won a World Series, and I had all my Budweiser and my champagne back in my apartment. I don't... So you wrote a check to they pay They gave for... me cash back. Okay. Okay, I wrote the check for the cash back. You just cashed a check at... Moment. Essentially, yeah. yeah. But I had no money in my account, so that motherfucker mm-hmm. was bouncing like some titties. So you're no longer with that banking institution? No, I'm not. <laughs> Wells Fargo, <laughs> suck my fucking dick, you fucking pig. <laughs> I got you, you fucking pigs. Eat my ass. They never recover from that $40 flip. <laughs> with. Yeah, but I think that's the last time I, I floated a check. How many checks do you think you've purposely written knowing it would bounce? A lot, dude. Because I you mean, got one for the thumb. Are we? Are we still? Oh, on no doubt. Two man. hands. No doubt, man. Because oh John, God. there were so many years where like I was just desperately poor, and I had poor spending skills. So aside from not having money, I mean, I worked, but I would have to wait till fucking payday every two weeks. So, brother, if there was a game on, wow, you, you know I'm bouncing all the way yeah. to the fucking bar. <laughs> yeah. So if you're passing these bad checks, like you say, more than you said five, like more than five. Jake, I six. I think he's in double digits. God knows. Yeah. Knowing that it would fucking be like 20% of my paycheck ultimately when they continue to try to cash that motherfucker. How many chances do you get from the bank? I don't know. It's more than once, though. It's more than once, though. How many banking institutions have you been asked to leave? (laughs) I think they just closed out my Wells Fargo account. So so they yanked you out of one. I mean, I've I've gotten a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I never got to the point of stealing hogs, though. That's beneath me. <laughs> Honestly, I perked up when you said stealing hogs, <laughs> flipping hogs. Wild hogs. <laughs> Wild hogs. Oh, uh, dude, get this. So back to, to Ray and Faye. In 1940, they both go to a doctor's visit at the same time, and that's how they meet. OBGYN? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That wouldn't surprise me, man. That's a weird place to meet somebody is the doctor's office because you're going there because something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Do they have matching goiters or something? <laughs> <laughs> they have opposing gout feet. That's how they knew it was a match. <laughs> but dude, get this. Uh, his wife, uh, Faye, guess what her parents are named? Mm, Flipper and Charles. <laughs> Jake, you want to take a guess? Henry and uh, Henrietta. Rufus and Gladys. Ooh, Gladys. Ooh, Rufus. Mm-hmm. Hello, Gladys. Nobody got no damn time to steal no damn hogs. <laughs> <laughs> the eye open at the end. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> that was an Olympic level dismount. I went did. to Neptune. I contacted Miss <laughs> Gladys, and now I'm back in uh, beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> See, I, I can go in and get out. All right. So during this time, they meet. They fall in love. And I believe it was six months after they met that they got married. Hmm. Started having kids immediately. All told, I believe they had five children, four boys, one girl. And uh, after the first couple kids, he starts getting a bad reputation around town as an animal thief. (laughs) He gets accused of stealing horses, which he denies and the authorities never resolve. But do you think, did he admit to any other uh, animal related thievery? Not then, no. Okay, so he's probably he probably did steal this. He did that shit. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're accusing yeah, a pig thief of being a horse thief. His cooler was full of glue. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was starting to think. <laughs> Can I, yeah. Would you guys like a horse burger? I mean, a burger. <laughs> <laughs> These ain't your horses. They are my horses. Oh yeah, and they rip off his fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real mustache that horse had until you fucking ripped it off his face. <laughs> really, horses have mustaches, Ray. He's Middle Eastern, all right. <laughs> Very disrespectful in his culture. I think they're called Arabian, <laughs> Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah, not uh, not Osama bin Racing. 
That's his horse, John. <laughs> Osama been hiding. <laughs> All right, so they go to Fresno, California, Jake. Things don't really work out for them uh, then, so they're back to Missouri. That's the gateway to the Sierra Nevada. That's a how the fuck did they end up there? Suck my dick, man. I don't fucking know. Grapes of wrath, bro. Dust bowl. How the Jake? Fuck what do you are those words mean? The country. The Dust bowl gate- or grapes of wrath? <laughs> 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 we don't have time to explain <laughs> literature to him right now. <laughs> All right. So they make it back to uh, fucking Arkansas, and in 1949, he gets popped for horse theft. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, they're about to send him to war. They are getting horses. close to stealing his ass, dude. He gets caught stealing cattle after this as well. Man. And at that point, they're like, we got to put your ass away. So they send him away for a fucking year for stealing animals. And he's just selling them. He is. He's, he's not doing anything else to him. No, not fucking them, man. All right. Jake. I wasn't asking that. Put that mouse on the floor, man. Leave my mouse alone. Can I at least have some popcorn? <laughs> you can have some popcorn. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask this whole time. Here you go. Oh, I'm gonna John, hand that down. popcorn to me. <laughs> get it to the top. Here you go. Oh, go, go nuts. Guys. He needs to reach into that mouse's head. If you're, if you're just listening to the podcast, um, I'm sorry. There's no reason to watch this. <laughs> Jake, you refilled that popcorn, didn't you? I, it is fresh from today. Mm. No, I'm, all, I'm all set. I, I Thank you. you <laughs> I will make you throw up. <laughs> what an insane item to buy. <laughs> well, is it meant for popcorn? Or? Yes. It's a popcorn. No, it's meant for perverts. And then they convert it to a fucking. They saw off the back of his head and make it into a <laughs> popcorn holder. But the, I'll pick that up, Danny. I'm sorry. Do you have a vacuum in here? Um, yeah, you buy it because each popcorn is like $12. So if you buy this, then refills are $2. Really? Yeah. So I t- Hell of a deal. I'm going to try to take it to the Disney store, see if they have popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this motherfucker, the family, they're living in an area called Rocky Comfort, Missouri. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That Jake? does sound nice. No, it doesn't. <laughs> what? It sounds like the opposite of nice. Oh, Rocky, no. Rocky yeah. Comfort? I just picture a very... Supple Italian man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Adrian, come here. <coughs> Let's sit on the couch. I'm Rocco Comfortati. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my name for the reservation, uh, Rocky Reclinieri. <laughs> Recliner. Oh. Okay. That's two. Me and my mother. God rest her soul. It's her birthday. Oh, my Wait, God. I'm, I'm so taking her going. soul out to eat tonight. <laughs> You're taking her soul out to eat? <laughs> you have to pay by plate. We share the same plate, Jake. You want to know what, what else we share? No, I don't want to know what else you're sharing. A bond that cannot be broken. <laughs> I'm so sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this motherfucker, he they're still moving around because of his reputation. Like, his plan is, like, all right. I'm going to write bad checks whatever town we live in. He'll go to livestock auctions, write the bad checks, and then before they can figure him out, he's already sold out of town and sold the livestock oh, for wow. the money. Yeah, he's pretty slick. This is until 1966 where they actually settled down. They settled down in an area of Missouri called Chillicothe. Just decades of him scamming. Brother. He, he gets by for a while. It is. I mean, yeah. I guess, like, if, if you... I don't think you have to go too far to get away from, uh, you yeah, know, as your years reputation. Go by, it gets harder and harder to it is. escape these, and you es- know. Especially, like, if, I don't know, if these towns are, uh, at this point, he's doing it primarily in Missouri. So it takes a little while for it to catch up to him, but eventually everybody's on his grift. And we're getting close to the point where everybody knows what the fuck he's doing. All right, Jake, so eventually they set it down. He and his wife purchase a farm in 1966. It's a 40-acre farm, so they have some space in an area called Chillicothe, Missouri. You know what they're famous for? Chili? Coffee. (laughs) (laughs) No, dickheads. That's where it's the home of sliced bread. Whoa. That's the first place they ever sliced bread? It is. It's a very funny story. They didn't slice bread until America was a country? Brother. 
so there was a gentleman named Otto Rowetter who was a resident of Chillicothe. And he had a respiratory disease where when he went to the doctor and had it diagnosed, the doctor was like, look, man, you need to give up on this fucking this patent for this fucking bread cutting machine and get your affairs in order because you're going to be dead soon. But fucking Otto refused to give in. So he's continuing. The doctor was a fucking hater. He was a hater. Yeah. He's a bread hater. <laughs> Anytime somebody's about to get bread, your haters come out of the woodwork. All right. So Otto was trying to figure out how to make this machine work that could cut bread for bakers. Before he fucking passes away, he fucking nails it. So Chillicothe is, from that point on, known as the home of sliced bread. What year was this invented? Uh, July of 1928 was the year that the first bakery, which was in Chillicothe, started selling sliced bread. 1928, really? brother. Much later in history than I had assumed. Yeah, they just ripped it apart like animals before that. Isn't that the phrase, the, it's the greatest invention since sliced bread? It is, bread? yeah. I always thought that was like from medieval times. No, brother, nineteen twenty. The restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what an interesting tidbit that I will forget as soon as I walk out the door you, today. Fuck, man. <laughs> I hope your diabetes gonna, worsens. I'm pre-diabetic, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> What's that like, pre-med? <laughs> yeah, pre-law. <laughs> Pre-day. Pre yeah, oh, all the time. Good man. Yeah, thank you. Oh, dude, so his wife, he and his wife, they get their fucking farm, 40 damn acres, Jake. Nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of stolen animals that could fit on that property. It is. Yeah. Don't you wish you had a farm with, with with animals? Man. That's my dream, man. Yeah? I, I want to save every fucked up cat I see. Should we start a podcast in commune? <laughs> we can all just fuck animals in peace. <laughs> <laughs> You just hear cats screaming for mercy in the background. <laughs> yeah, for your you your little ass dick gonna fuck a cat. <laughs> I need a a big cow pussy for my penis. <laughs> you think cow pussies are like cow stomachs? There's like eight chambers to it. It's like I don't know. I feel like I'm lost in here. <laughs> you got to leave a fucking bread trail out of the pussy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's probably like that, right? It's I got to imagine it's just like yeah, that, yeah, man. I don't know anything. Jake, if you could fuck one animal, what would it be? And uh, why? Man, ostrich. Um, because then I could ride it afterwards. You might be able to ride it during. <laughs> you get the right ostrich, Jake. Yeah. Especially if we're in that t-shirt. <laughs> All right, so back to Ray and Faye. Ray's reputation has gotten so bad at this point that he cannot go to a livestock auction they just chase and pay for animal. There. He can go, but they're like, we're not selling. We're not taking a check for yeah. you. It's either cash or nothing. He doesn't have money. So he's like, fuck, man. How am I going to figure this out? The grift becomes latching on to drifters coming through town, sparking friendships with them, paying them $50 a day to come work on his farm, and then saying like, all right, listen, a lot of the local livestock auctioneers don't like me. If you're willing to do this, I think we can both make a lot of money. So the guy, most of the guys are like, all right, I'm listening. Because most of these guys just have nothing. Many of them are alcoholics. They're yeah. just yeah. beaten down by life. They'll do anything they can that might get them money. Yeah, a lot like us. <laughs> <laughs> That's patreon.com if you're watching this on YouTube. So he's able to trick these drifters into opening up bank accounts. Right, because they can't use his check because they right, can't see yeah. his name. Opening bank accounts and P.O. boxes. All right. So what they're doing, Jake, I'm going to ruin this. So what they do is oh, no. he'll have these drifters go with him to livestock auctions and have these poor bastards fucking raise their hands and bid on livestock. They'll use their checks to give to the fucking auctioneer, and then old fucking Ray will end up keeping the livestock. What do you think he does to these drifters? Does he slaughter it's them? Unfortunately, yes, Jake. No! He's, that's when he starts killing? At least, this is when he starts. As soon as he gets, starts getting into having Drifter set up bank accounts and then setting up the P.O. boxes, like, that's when he gets into murder. So this is... Is, is ruining them financially not enough for him? They, he has to fucking kill them as well? Well, if he didn't, they would ruin him. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and he's cool. he's already been to jail multiple times. Jake, I still have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so... 
Does he have them do this like a few times and then he switches? No. Or, no. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll pay you your money. Just let's do it two more times, and then I'll get you a big check. All right. So there's. He did this any time between five and twelve times, Jake. All right. The reason why they have that number is because when police eventually raid his farm, they find a Polaroid camera case with a list inside of it of 12 names, all the men are missing, and all the names on this list have an X next to them. What a coincidence. Yeah. You know, sometimes good record keeping is not in your best interest. (laughs) (laughs) All right, dude, so uh, they're going to livestock auctions. He's getting what he wants, and unfortunately these men are not getting anything that they want. Now, where... Where it goes wrong, oh, get this, too. This is especially fucked up. Guess what his wife is doing during this time when all these men are going missing? I bet she ain't making no pies. Hmm? What she is doing, John, she's keeping clothes that these murder victims leave behind and making a quilt out of the murder victims' clothes. Whoa! Damn, she's a down-ass bitch. She is, man. Wow. She knows everything. Yeah. She Well, it's debatable how much she knows. And... Oddly enough, she was the first one convicted of murder. I was going to say, she eventually does get her hands dirty. She does. And kills. Well, I, I don't even know that, man. Really? Dude, I don't it's even know. Confirmed. Right. But she gets fucked, too. So, in... Uh, all right, this was by... All right, so Gerald Perkins is a guy who ends up... Uh, fuck. Wait, they're not killing... People. Wait, I'm going to fuck this up. It's all right. Give me a moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell John, I actually found my first bad uh, bitch alert that I fell in love with. Where? Um, I screenshot it, then I deleted it off my phone so my wife wouldn't see it. But I'll, I'll, I'll have to... You go pervert. My, what I'll did have you to do? go to my re- recently deleted items and show you guys. It was a woman who worked at a hospital. Old guy dies. So what does she do? She takes his debit card and takes it to the vending machine to buy snacks. And I was like, I'm in love. She got in trouble for that? Yeah, she got busted because she was like doing this. Like they caught her on the security camera footage. How many times did she do it? I I, I guess once, but once was enough. It was like ten dollars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bad, maybe she, what a bad bitch. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a bunch of king size bars that she was getting. You know. <laughs> yeah, so. it's been a while since I've gotten vending machine snacks. Maybe they're up. Inflation must have hit the vending machines too. It's it's been hit hard. Speaking of hard hitting. Facts, if you figure out what you wanted to say. Well, inflation's hitting my shorts right now, now that we're back. <laughs> All right, so 1986 is when the killing starts. Okay. All right? For three years, he's killing drifters. We get to 1989, and eventually he comes across a drifter named Jack McCormick who's living with him and who's working on the farm. And Jack becomes aware of the fact that he has also been killing people. In addition to swindling people out of their livestock and uh, writing bad checks, Jack becomes aware that old fucking Ray fucking Copeland has been killing people because he says that he sees human bones on the farm. Whoa. So. He doesn't even bury them? uh, Three of them were, all right. Actually, four were buried beneath the barn floor and one was dropped inside of a well. Did they continue to drink water from that well? I don't know, John. I wouldn't doubt it, though. But this motherfucker, so he gets away, but he almost does not get away. So when Ray finds out that Jack is on to him, he lures him out to the barn and tells him, I need you to help me track him down this raccoon that's been giving me trouble. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) Solid move right there. So Jack McCormick goes to the barn. He knows something's up, but at the same time, Ray's already got a, got his fucking rifle. And he's killing people. With, everybody that he kills, he kills with this twenty two rifle. He sneaks up behind him, and he shoots him in the back of the head. Yikes. So old Jack is, he knows something bad is about to happen. And when he feels like Ray, or yeah, fucking Ray get behind him, and he feels like he's about to shoot him, he starts to reason with him. He's like, listen, man, I promise you I won't say anything. Somehow something he says works because Ray lets him go. Whoa. Wow. So Jack fucking hightails it out of there, and Jack McCormick, when he gets a few states away, calls this cr- this fucking Crime Stoppers line, calls police and says, "Look, you need to go check out this farm. There's a lot of fucked up shit happening on this place at this place." Wow. So Ple- he, he had the gun to the back of his head, essentially. Yeah, and he was able to reason with this fucking this animal thief of mice Dude. and men. That's what I was gonna say. If Lenny had a couple extra brain cells, maybe he wouldn't have gotten his fucking brain blown. <laughs> <laughs> 
His brain's blown out and his back blown out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why Gary Sinise did that alternate ending. <laughs> Wait, he's fucking dead. Re- <laughs> yeah, it was an alternate lifestyle ending. <laughs> so please come to check out the farm. Initially, they don't find anything until they check this barn that's that's all the way off on the edge of the property. They check the barn. They see human remains. So old Ray and Faye both get arrested, Jake. And that's... It's always in the barn that's furthest away. <laughs> yeah. You know? Don't go to that one barn with the sign that says do not enter on it with all the locks. The one on the edge of the property in the woods. Guard dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the barbed wire fence. Don't go in there is where my guard hogs are. <laughs> <laughs> guard hogs. <laughs> so it doesn't sound like she is, uh, obviously she's an accessory to murder, but... Well, she was There's no like measures. actual facts of her pulling the trigger on it. No, right? I think, I think at best she had knowledge of the situation, but there's nothing like showing her getting her hands dirty. Yeah. However, she was the first one prosecuted in in November of 1990. She was prosecuted for five murders. Whoa, damn! She was sentenced to death for four of them. Whoa, and sentenced to a life term on the fifth murder. So they killed her four times and then still made her do a life turn. John, not today. <laughs> and when they told Ray that his wife had just been convicted and sentenced to die, he said, well, sometimes those things happen. Oh, my God. Damn. He was already in jail at the time? Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, he got the same fate? Yes. Now, during part of his wife's defense was that she said she was suffering from battered woman syndrome. And all indications are that he was enough of, a, of an asshole that he probably was yeah. beating her and uh, the kids. But they didn't give a shit. They still, they did not give a fuck. They still fucked her ass up. Missouri, they killed her? They didn't kill her. Huh? All right. So two years after his conviction. Make that face again, please, for the camera. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, said they, you said they didn't call? <sighs> Man. I am unwell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, uh, speaking of which, when I was at my most unwell recently, I was in full Dracula costume, and, and you pointed that out, man. <laughs> that was yeah. your most unwell? Recently, yeah. Damn, you were hiding behind a mask. I was pretty fucked up. Dude, during that time, which was probably August, there was a night um, where my wife and I, we go we go for walks many nights, and this particular night, like, I was not well mentally, and uh, I ended up in the field at the at the end of my street screaming, my fucking brain is broken over and over again. In that field, recently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now look at me. Was it in the middle of football practice? <laughs> <laughs> there were some people there. <laughs> ah, let's yeah. go to a different park, kid. Yeah, I, and that's why you don't play football. I accidentally blocked a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> Hit you right in the head. And it picks you right up. <laughs> Uh, too many men on the field. Uh, this <laughs> fucking psychopath. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there's one man on the field, and he's not a ref. Oh, man. But yeah, I still had, I I still was able to gather it together and put on full Dracula. Makeup I can't podcast, imagine just man. sadly in the dark putting on Dracula makeup for the podcast, <laughs> a comedy podcast. Yeah, now look uh, at me there, Jake. Look man. at you. You're on fire, brother. So all right, back to Ray and Faye. Ray only spent two years in prison after being convicted of the murders. After appealing? or uh, did... Dude, I don't even think he appealed. He spent two years in jail. He was convicted in 1991. 1993, he has a massive stroke. Jake, I'm glad you find this funny. No. <laughs> I'm sorry he had a stroke. Speaking of massive strokes, he was just at a sex party. No, I was like... at Disney. <laughs> I was at Disney. Yeah, old Ray passes away. Okay. Out of jail, though. Oh, no, no. He's in jail, jail, yeah. yeah. So doesn't even make it to his execution. Now, his wife, on the other hand, all right, she lasts another six years. In 1999, she actually, um, she was released from prison. She's super fucked up, okay? she She's the one that has a stroke. Ray dies of natural causes. So fucking Faye gets a stroke, and they're like, all right, she had her sentence commuted to a life sentence, and at this point, it's 1999. She's super fucked up. And I think a lot of people saw that maybe it was a little, a little too much to sentence her to fucking die 
when I didn't see any concrete evidence tying her to the actual murder. Right, yeah. So they eventually tell yeah. her that she can get out of prison. Plus, plus she gave them a nice quilt. That was very nice of her. <laughs> so she goes right to a nursing facility, and uh, she's there for about four years. And then murders the entire staff. <laughs> <laughs> Did she die there? Yeah, she's fucked to death. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but you made it. <laughs> I did not make you. She's fucked to death by a pig that got loose. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they get They remember. Yep, the they do. Full yep. Romeo circle. Yep. Now, at the time, she was the oldest woman on death row. How old was she? 80s? 70s? 69, brother. Oh, yeah, 69. Come on, I done told you. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, is she still the oldest lady to ever go on death row? That's fucking old. I don't know. We're going to have to look that up. We're gonna have to. No, it can't be. What about like Nanny Dawson stuff? Doesn't she predate with the one and carry the two? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> eh, I'm about to go outside again. My brain is broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not broken anymore, baby. <laughs> Need a lot of tape. <laughs> Yeah, so happy birthday in heaven to both Ray and Faye Copeland. I hope uh hope you're stealing pigs in heaven, brother. I truly mean that. And, and Ray uh, Ray died of natural causes. You were he saying. did die of natural causes. All right, okay. I, I think no it's stroke. a broken heart. Damn. I think he died of a broken heart. So did he only die two years later? Natural causes? Or was it like much later? It was two years after okay. his conviction. So and he died before his wife. He did, yeah. But he died of a broken heart. Ninety three. Yeah, he died of a broken heart. Knowing that she was going to die in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Love works in mysterious it ways. Does. It He's does. like, oh my God, this bitch isn't even going to make it to Woodstock. <laughs> I hope Court dedicates their set to her. <laughs> it was very inappropriate when the, uh, the person who was scheduled to do the execution said, Are you ready? <laughs> That was unfortunate, man. It was inappropriate, yeah. It's a shame that guy got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a executioner is a job where you're just on call for years at a time? I think those things are scheduled. Okay. I don't think you get a call in the middle of the night. Like, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> All right, who is it now? Get me a fucking pen. Hun, I, get me a pen. Was it you who told this me? This isn't a fucking bit. So get me a fucking pen. Somebody's got to die and I got to be there at fucking... Pull the trigger. Yeah. What's the pen for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he can write down the information of who he's got to kill. <laughs> God damn, what is inside of your head? All right, uh, all right. We got fucking a Fannie Mae, a Faye Copeland. This one doesn't write. Can you get me a fucking pen that writes? How many times <laughs> do we have to go? I'm scratching the the fucking name into. No, this is not you. It's her. I'm scratching the name into the paper of the person I'm supposed to kill. How do I look going to my fucking prison, presenting them with a paper that's scratched into and not written on? I fucking hate you so much. I can't do this anymore. I fucking hate you so much. Try licking the tip. All right, I'm so sorry for yelling at you. <laughs> All right. Faye Copeland, 69 years old. I know, dude, me too. All right, I'll that's, be right there. that's also something Jake yelled at his sex party. I did not yell at the sex party. <laughs> Lick the tip, let the gerbil out. <laughs> oh no, that reminds me. I want to do that burping gerbils uh, podcast with you guys, <laughs> and you always will want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, listen, I'm willing to do burping gerbils with Richard Gear on my own. I'm. If I told you that I could secure an interview with Richard Gear, how would you two react to that? Um, with disbelief, because. There's no world where that would ever happen. Yeah. Would he be in person or would it be a, a phone call from Dan Soder pretending to be Richard Gere? Jake, mark my words. <laughs> John, mark my words. Honey, can you give me a pen again? <laughs> I'm going to present to you and to all our wonderful viewers and listeners out there an interview with Richard Gere himself on the very first episode of Burping Gerbils podcast. You don't believe me? Um, I'm not sure this is something that you can believe in, necessarily. I'm trying to think of how many cameos it would cost to get him to answer these questions for you to <laughs> stagnate them. When the two of you see that interview, hit the Little Stinkers Patreon. Oh, God, no. 
How are you, how are you going to react? I'm going to say, wow, things must be pretty bad for Richard Gere if he did this podcast. I'll Jake? I'll apologize, and I will you know give credit where credit's due, Mike. Thank you, Jake. You're welcome. I'll take the gerbil right out of my ass, and I'll put it right in your hand. That's what I'll <laughs> on do. On camera. <laughs> From my ass to your hand. <laughs> And that's my word. It's like a like a bad cop getting demoted. <laughs> <laughs> and in your gun, your badge, and your gerbil. <laughs> I'm gonna make that happen. Yeah, put it on your put it on your dream board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> put it on your vision board. Hang a picture of him above your head. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. I'm securing an interview with the one, the only Richard Gere, and his gerbil. End of the gerbil. Yep. Oh, my God. It's going to look like Ratatouille, Jake. <laughs> it's a really fun ride I did at Epcot at Disney. Oh, you what? did the Ratatouille? I did the Ratatouille ride. They made it into a ride? Yeah, it's a, it's like a 3D. We we passed it. It was in Paris. What? They got rides in Paris? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. They squirt you? I guess that makes sense. Yeah. You feel the heat? French cuisine. You thought Paris was gay before you got there. <laughs> That's not nice, guys. <laughs> did, did you get a little handful of like uh, soup on the way out? No, I wish I did. <laughs> they didn't give you any food. You just got to go get in line. I took a it. picture. I took a picture where I have to point at Ratatouille. I I don't know if I got it though. I got to look. Me and the family were pointing at Ratatouille in the corner or something. Was he? Uh, Apparently, was he... they were going to put him in afterwards. They're like, everyone, point over there at Ratatouille. And we're all like, all right. They're matching T-shirts, just pointing over here. And then they put them in after. I haven't seen the picture though. I'm not sure I follow. I think and I, I don't think, think they ripped you off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only eighty dollars. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna put them in afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a very cash app, Venmo, whatever. You <laughs> yeah, got. Yeah. <laughs> very strange. Italian What's your name? email address so we can send them in <laughs> when we put them in there afterwards? We only do AOL accounts. <laughs> oh well, in that case, it's tiny chubby chaser at AOL <laughs> Oh man, yeah man! I can't wait to make that Richard Gear podcast. And uh, Jake, I can't wait to go to Disney World with you. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I can't wait, man. When are you guys gonna go? You think next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go to Disney a second time without your children in, in the uh, same don't, month? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> what? Don't put you on so blast. Much, I had so much guilt about that when we went. Do you think they know? No, no he doesn't know. Don't you uh, dare say anything. The only thing I have that is evidence is me and Danny Dubs in uh. The Millennium Falcon, or in the Rebel Alliance thing. Wait, what, you took a picture? Yeah, we took a selfie. We sent it to you. Fuck, so you guys got it too. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> and what's your son's cell phone number? <laughs> <laughs> it's just 911. <laughs> if you were to text us. <laughs> um, he will find out one day. Oh, yeah, one yeah. day. But I mean, he did go the next week, so yeah. he can't be that mad at no, you. No, no, no. And I, I, you know, I, I considered it a scouting thing. Like you guys showed me soaring. That was such a pleasant ride. Did you take like, him on it? Yep, and he loved it. Yeah. And there's something. Remember, Danny? Remember when we were waiting for Mike and John outside of Star Wars, and a woman came up to me like, "You guys doing a kid swap? You remember that? What? Jake, man, don't. <laughs> what? It's a real thing. So, if you're going to Disney, people, and you have kids. Don't do this if you don't have a kid. This you have weird. hot kids. <laughs> so what you can do... Oh, wait, I do remember. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Woo, yeah. I've been <laughs> vindicated. Uh, so it basically, it's you go on with your kid, and then your wife or partner or whoever gets to go on with your kid after the fact. Like, immediately. Okay. You get to like hop right back in li- the lightning lane. Man, I wish they didn't have that sign, though, man. You could just tell people, like, hey, if you want to ride, come hand your kid off to your spouse. Yeah, yeah, and she can go too. I will have to read this information. I don't think I can hear it and absorb it. <laughs> <laughs> so say if me pretend Mickey's my son. Can you write it? <laughs> can you write? Give it me a pen. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do? Did you get to schedule your whole day pretty much with uh, uh, fast pass shit? Or Lightning Lane or whatever. Yeah, it is. so the way it works is you get to, to book it. Like, you can start at 7 in the morning, and everyone jumps on the app at that time to book, like... Oh, you can start on the yeah, phone. Yeah. They don't open till like, 10. But you right. can only book one thing. 
per day. So like uh like so if right then and there, so if I book Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. at like one PM, I can't book another thing until I ride the ride or it's been two hours. Hmm. Hmm. So those are the options. So if it's now if if it's nine AM and I'm still waiting to do Guardians later in the day, I can book another ride at nine AM, but it's like gotcha. whatever's available. Gotcha. So if you do it right, you know, you could do like we ended up doing Guardians twice and that was dude, that was sick. That they had to medic vacuum my dad or medically evaluate my dad because he threw up. What? Yeah, it threw up. Uh, it threw off his whole equilibrium. Felt bad because my dad loves roller coasters. Did, did you watch? Did he do it twice? <laughs> uh, no, he, he did it. That was the first ride we did at like eleven thirty in the, the morning. The EMT is like, you got to be fucking kidding me. He went back on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it's dude, it's a sick th- coaster. It, you start it like sets you up like you're about to go flying forward, and said you go backwards. And then it's like Space Mountain, but it's like set spinning you all around really fast, and you're also spinning while you're doing it. Huh. And it, it rules. And, uh, yeah, it was too much for him. Jake, I feel like we're glossing over your dad needing to be resuscitated at Epcot. <laughs> 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 what happened, dude? He, I, I, he was fine. I let him drink from my water bottle. Uh, then I was like, you good? How like, nice yeah, of good. you. <laughs> you gave him a sip of water. Wow. Well, listen, he he didn't want a pat on the back or anything. He wanted no attention. You know? oh. and I was like, you want me to hang out with you? He's like, no, nah, I'm good. And then, like, two seconds later, after we left, he started throwing up. He was with my mom, though. And, uh... And then somebody else, like somebody who worked there, stopped him, checked him out, and they're like, "He's fine." Like they took an EKG and all that stuff, like right then and there, and then he just went back to the hotel and slept the rest of the day. Did they do an EKG or an MICKEYG, Jake? <laughs> what did they do, Jake? I don't know, but I had fun calling him a pussy, so that was great. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Dad. It is hard to like give show your dad a lot of compassion when he's fucked up, because yeah. I think you just automatically assume that he's going to get better. Yeah. I'm saying this because I, when my dad had a heart attack, I was just like, yeah, all right, I'll call 911 and I'll sit here. <laughs> I, I wish I had been more compassionate in that moment. And I wonder if my dad was Wait, that moment. you were there while he was having the heart I attack? I was, yeah. And you're just like, all right, I guess I'll call 911. Yeah, I just remember asking me to call 911 and I called him. I hey, called before him. I called 911, does anyone want pizza? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I did what he asked, but. When he asked, yeah. please, Mike, Mike, please call 911. <laughs> <laughs> I'd saved my dad before from choking. Did you tell us on air? I, I don't know if I told you on air or not. Tell it, yeah. please. Uh, my dad was choking on some sausage, uh, Italian sausage. Your dad was at the sex party, too. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird family. Uh, but he got hammered on uh, martinis that he was making, like, Strong like Bombay gin, like just oh man, it's like straight uh, liquor, right? And yeah, and it, it was like the whole family, the same family went to Disney because it's entire family of witnesses, and um, we were at this house in Virginia Beach, and he's like, I like to make a toast to our grandparents who don't love us, and we're like, what the fuck is he talking about? And then, like two seconds later, he's choking on a piece of like sausage because it was like an Italian sausage. Was slice. he eating while he was speaking? Yeah. Did he think yeah. the sausage was a microphone? <laughs> But yeah, all of a sudden he starts choking. Everyone's freaking out. Oh. I jump up. I have to give him the Heimlich. And then I didn't see this. I saw his face like purple. But people were like, he was gray. So mm. I wasn't doing a good job of saving my dad's life. But eventually they had like a breakfast bar. I just took my dad and I like body slammed him against the thing and it came out. Damn and then, Jake. yeah, it ruled. Did you think you were going to have to do that again at Disney? <laughs> Just he's yeah. vomiting, you know, <laughs> squeezing it out of him. More of him. Oh man, was he able to make it to a trash can, or was he throwing up in the ride? You know, I don't know. No, not in the ride. It was outside the ride. He he was fine. Was and he drinking martinis before he got on that roller coaster? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was he was amped up, dude. He was ready for the day. Oh, and that poor was, guy, man. Yeah, he got. You pay all that money for a pass for one day, and he's done and. 35 minutes oh. Sounds like you guys Money's worth That shit sent him bro Yeah Yeah dude Then my <laughs> kid was like uh, Pop up Was that your favorite ride <laughs> He's like That's my favorite ride Was that your favorite ride <laughs> And my dad's like Yep Yeah that was my favorite ride <laughs> Yeah the one that let me Get to leave my family And sit inside In air conditioning all day <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite ride yeah. Absolutely Did he have a uh, Pop up shirt on No he didn't Ah uh, that's what did it <laughs> it's a good lesson to learn. <laughs> you hear that, pop ups? 
<laughs> Jake, I, this happens every time I go on family vacation. Um, did you reach a point of family vacation psychosis? You know what? No. And I can say this. I don't, uh, I should probably shouldn't say this on the thing. But let's just say we, me and my wife, we found like, we found a common, in, uh, fuck. We found like a common enemy. Okay. To channel everything towards. And we were like, all right. So, like, that was our bonding. Is it who Kyrie Irving is <laughs> at odds with right now, Jake? It is not who Kyrie Irving is with odds with okay. right now. John, your guess? Um, uh, same, same guess as you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Was it somebody in your no. party? No, it was not. It was the popcorn guy. It was an employee. Yeah. <laughs> it was the and guy who refil- refused to fill up <laughs> Mickey's head. An employee that just happened to have your last name. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Did you buy any uh, any of the light up things by the, from the guy that pushes the cart around? I have w- one thing. It was like a little bubble maker. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, not for me. Just, I mean, mm-hmm. it could be. I have mm-hmm. a bouncing ball on my jacket, <laughs> uh, but it's a little bubble maker and it spins around. Nice. Yeah, lights up. Pretty cool. That was fun. There's a lot of people in, and uh, in the Hollywood Studios. Is that what it is that we went to? Yeah, Epcot. And, uh, the other one. With yeah. the oh, Hollywood. we did yeah, go to two that yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood. There's somebody had bubbles. Was yeah, like walking behind. It was that thing. Day. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we went to the Indiana Jones show. Cut it short because of the rain. They uh-huh. did two things. That cool ass intro, and then like they're like, we can't do the fun plane thing or the fun climb thing. So or the we, rock. They, yeah. So they just did like a a fight scene. Um. So I was like, that's. Hmm. My kid was like, that was short. I'm like, it's okay, buddy. We'll come back. But That's weird that they still have that ride. Of all things. Indiana Jones? Yeah. It's so uh, old. I, you know what? I think it's just one of those uh, attractions where a lot of people still go to it because it's a nice change of pace. And you can sit down. And you don't have to fucking something. stand forever. Yeah. You go, you sit yeah. for a while, and you chill out. I f- I f- I'm surprised they haven't like updated it to a more recent movie, I guess, because mm-hmm. it's from the 80s, right? So well, yeah. long time. Well, Splash Mountain, I learned like they probably won't, it from... well, it's still Splash Mountain right now, but it's it's done. It's like I think by next May it's going to be the Princess and the Frog. It's going to be a uh, Trans Gulch. <laughs> What's a Gulch? Dust Bowl. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is it still gonna be the same log flume though? Like yeah, I think so. Splashy I think, ride. Yeah, the mechanics will be the same, just the theme's different. Yeah, but I think it's called Princess Tiana's Oh uh, Bayou Adventure. Mm. What sh- what movie is it from? Princess, Princess and, the, and the Frog. Yeah, that's old, right? Yeah, it is. It's like ten, fifteen years, I think, at this point. It took forever <laughs> for the ride to be fifteen minutes late. Yeah. I'm going to go back to Jake. Oh, oh man. Uh, <laughs> nah. You want some popcorn? You know what? I don't usually eat popcorn out of a mouse's head, but <laughs> I really don't. I've never I, I've never had popcorn out of a bag, and I will never. Wait, really? Only movie theater popcorn you. and microwavable popcorn. That's microwavable. Mm. Um, I made it right before I got here. I thought you said it was a bag of... I have a microwave in my car. <laughs> You open my glove box. You just can set it for three minutes, and you're a real goofy motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Did we get to talk about our our trip yet? A little bit during the live one. Yeah, right? a little bit during the live show. What did we do? We talked about Halloween Horror Nights, right? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. Well, we did the recap thing uh, for the video that's mm-hmm. coming out on Patreon. Um, if you haven't seen it already, if you're watching this in the future, go check it out. It's pretty awesome. Um, but then we, we didn't really talk about the Casey Anthony stuff too much, except for like the guy who was outside the house. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Uh, we got the Casey Anthony docuseries coming out later yeah. this month. And then, uh, yeah, we went to Florida and we filmed some fun stuff at some of Casey Anthony's old spots. And, uh, we almost got chased off by the old man who now owns her house. She does not live there anymore. Which is weird. His name's Anthony Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Tony we, we were creeping out front of Casey Anthony's old house And uh, we must have driven by about 15 fucking times And then eventually we ended up parking like a couple blocks away Before we finally made our way over there And guys I don't know about you but it was worth it Yeah it was Yeah That guy knew what he was doing too The He knew what we were up to Yeah 
But I mean, like he had his workbench out on, in the driveway, and then would just wheel it back. Like he had like one of those kind of workbenches. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he's you, you gotta be. It starts raining all of a sudden. You gotta get your workbench back inside. You know what? Him. That's probably why he's out front all the time. Mm-hmm. Because he, when they bought the house, people were probably stopping by all the time out front, taking a picture, being like, mm-hmm. "That's Casey Anthony's house." And he's like, you, you know, he's probably staring out the window like an old. Man, just getting angry. Like, uh, there's these kids out here again. That's a lot of work to do to have to fucking push a, a workbench out every goddamn day just to fend off people who just want to take a few nice pictures and hopefully meet the loves of their life. I think it's more because he likes being in the sunshine. He was a ripped old guy with a nice tan. I was about to say the limelight. He was ripped, John? I, I made, guess old guy ripped. He made me horny. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that the uh, docu series coming out visits any of the other places of Casey Anthony's that we visited? Perhaps, because we we visited some hot spots. We visited Casey's home. We visited her boyfriend's apartment that she stayed at for a while, including after the murder. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was fun. And then we went to Fusion Nightclub, and then we ended up at uh, Universal Studios. And we also went at Fusion Nightclub. We, I mean, we didn't win any contest herself but we were invited into a uh, a fancy middle eastern restaurant oh yes yeah. that was good yeah had some good hummus hum- hummus mm-hmm. and then oh my favorite moment of the whole trip was visiting aileen warnos's old haunts what a fucking day that was man terrifying yeah, her bar rules scary her bar her her bar but the bar i'm been to her bar was the nicest bar I've ever been to. That was not the nicest bar. To me, what it's nice. It's a total fuck, fucking dude. shithole. Yeah. But it's the place that if I drank, I would want to hang out there more than anything. hundred percent. More than like any other cool place, place that I've been to. But it seemed like a dangerous place too, because if you remember, yeah. and I said during the live show, the guy had said the bank robber was there. Mm-hmm. The guy who robbed the bank that morning. Well, not that morning that we were there. Person robbed the bank in the morning and then just hung out the rest of the day drinking at the last resort. Yeah, if you guys get the chance, go to the last resort in Port Orange, Florida. It's you, you don't need to go there. No, that place was great. <laughs> the last resort was great. Yeah, it was. It's the fucking hotel that is terrifying. But if you go to the last resort in Port Orange, Florida, it's the coolest bar setup I've ever seen. You walk into the indoor part, and although you have access to it, the indoor part of the bar is not functional. They tell you to go out back. And when you go out back, You're just walking into, like, a lot that's filled with, like, a makeshift bar and then all these trailers. And there's tons of little places where you can hide. If you want to fucking lean up against somebody's trailer and drink, you can. Nobody bothers you. Why would you want to do that? (laughs) Who wants to? I don't think you could do that. Oh, come on. Nobody would have bothered us. But if I can can give a a guide, a food guide, life hack for this this bar, The Last Resort. Yes, you walk in. The front bar is not functional. But... If you like to have a good time like me or Mike or John, what you can do is just hang out in that front part a little too long and stare at the boob wall until you get at what you need out. There are some titties on the wall and uh, a little bit of pussy, too. There was pussy on the wall? The one like, the lady was naked. Oh, I didn't see her. You can see a lot of stuff on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a, a, a old lady with some nice um, ragers? <laughs> there was right, yeah. yeah. Could have been, man. Yeah, no, she was like featured in like half the pictures on the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the first time a, a a spunker has made my pants tight in public. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't remember her because I I tend to remember my hot old ladies. I'm surprised too. Yeah. Of all the things to forget, a huge <laughs> set of milkers on a gray-haired woman. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then three blocks away is the fucking scoot in. And there are no laws on this strip in Port Orange, it seems to be. Yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. They were openly selling and buying meth at air, and it's something that the cops have to know about. I feel like it's their version of Kensington. Well, dude, they can't lock everybody up. It seems relegated to the scoot in. So we rented Aileen, Aileen, or whatever the fuck her name is, at the scoot in. You could rent a room. It was like a hundred bucks for the night. So I was like, yes, we're definitely going to do this. We get there during the day 
and it's already a weird setup right off the fucking bat. We pull in. Nobody's in the fucking office. So we're wandering around for a minute until uh, an Indian woman appears. She notifies an Indian man that some someone needs to be addressed at the fucking front door. So this Indian man walks up to me and he's... I, Initially, my first thought was like, oh, this old man is coked up. I've never seen an old coked up Indian dude before. Still kind of pleasant, trying to make small talk, saying that he's got family that lives in uh, fucking Audubon, PA, which I guess is kind of close to Philly. Eventually gives me my key after, unfortunately, making a copy of my license and my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go, we we enter the room, and it, it just smells like fucking fossilized cum. This, the room is fucking disgusting. Yeah, it, it was clean though. Uh, like, the bathroom was way cleaner than I expected. Uh, tr- all right. Uh, um, you know what I mean? Like, it, the it was bed like, wasn't. The bed was. The bath gross. of the toilet was cleaner than the bed. Yes, I would have rather slept in the bathtub than that bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have rather fallen asleep in the toilet if we had to stay there for the night. But yeah, we dropped our shit off there. We checked it out. We went to the fucking. Uh, the last resort. After leaving the last resort, we come back to the fucking scoot in, and at this point, uh, it's close to sundown. Yeah. And as the sun starts to go down, shadier and shadier characters start to appear. Man. At this fucking motel, including a gentleman, which felt comfortable sitting right outside of our room, which seems insane to me. Like, does that? Does that seem like something you would do is sit out directly outside of somebody's motel room? If I'm yeah. all zooted up on Matt, there's no there's no telling so, where I'm gonna sit. So outside of each motel room, there's like one or two chairs outside designated for each room. So when Mike says that, that means this person decided, oh, I'm gonna sit in front of this person's room. Right. So it wasn't like there was one bench that they chose and that they sat on. It was they just purposely sat there on speakerphone. Speaking in Spanish, probably talking about how they plan on robbing us, and we're not just assuming that they're all fucking on meth too. They're trying to, they're they're having meth conversations. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was uh... about who's got what and what they can trade for it, and and as the sun went at one point, like the guy outside of our room stopped talking, and you could tell it was the point where he looked into our room because he burst out laughing because I don't want to say what Jake was dressed as. But Jake was dressed as something that would probably crack even the hardest meth addict. Well, thank you, Mike. And he got him to, to, to giggle. But then we had to film what we were there to film, and um, we were there for a few hours, and just more and more sketchy characters were appearing out of the woodwork. And I cannot fucking wait to leave that fucking place, man. You know, we probably gave them a scare, too, though. Yeah, we were... We were, we were hooting and hollering. Yeah, we made some noises. Yeah. Some, some noises coming out of our room. Yeah, I should have saved my, uh, my brain is fucking broken for that parking lot. <laughs> it would have, everyone in unison would have started doing it with you. But dude, it was even hard to leave the fucking place because nobody's in the fucking front office. So I, I tried to give them the key back, yeah. but nobody was there. It was weird because once we got out of the room, all the lights of the motel were off, right? Except for that street lamp. Yeah, yeah, it did like, seem like the that. sign was off for Scoot in. The front office lights were, were like I think they had one light over like by the door that was on, but that was it. Yeah, I think All, when they fill up, then they just leave for the night. I the think, rooms are full. I think the couple. I think just, they like, live there. I, yeah, I think they live there as well. I think they were in the corner because I remember seeing the lady come out of the the corner a couple of times. In one of the rooms that you like yeah. is yeah. in the strip. Yeah, I think really? it was like a. So the the motel is like L shaped, uh-huh. and I I think I'm on the board with you, Jake. I think the couple live at where the uh, the, the L- points of yep. the building form. Yeah, they probably have like the biggest room. Uh, but because I remember brag. I saw her door open and it had like a screen door, like because all the other doors were just like an outside door, where whereas hers had like a like a window. It's nice. You can yeah. Keep the it's an extra the layer. Moths out. Yeah. <laughs> the meths. <laughs> Now, the guy next to us did seem like the most normal one of the lot. <laughs> the guy who asked us if it was chow time. Yeah, that guy yeah. was not normal. <laughs> in any other fucking... A hundred feet away, he would have been the weirdest guy in the world, but because of the rest of the people <laughs> yeah. around us, he was the most comforting and normal. What was weird was, like, it, like I said, like, the, there was another guy who showed up who was probably a young guy in his 30s, maybe early 40s, gets out of his car and knocks on the door while that guy's sitting there and 
you know, those rooms aren't big at all, mm-hmm. right? So somebody knocks on your door, that's maybe what, a five to 10 second, like I'll be right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it took this guy to, who was in the room, who was also like a pretty young, younger guy, like 15 minutes before he opened the door. He might have been duking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> let, the guy, let the guy take a fucking shit without you talking about him on the internet. Took, you just described him as the weirdest yeah. human being you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. No, not that guy. Yeah. The guy with the wig and the broomstick legs was. <laughs> he was not involved. He was just sitting out in front trying to make conversation. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. didn't you talk to him? Huh? Why didn't you talk to him more? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you fucking talk to him more, Mike? Because <laughs> I was Dude, busy. When I in the weirdest fucking place in Florida. I didn't like which when is Dan, saying a lot. <laughs> you uh, like when we got done, it was very stuffy in our room, and we wanted to like open the door up and air it out a little bit. And like Danny's trying to put his equipment away, and we're just like the door's wide open. We're all freaking out. And then when we go to pack up the van or what the you know with all the equipment, uh, the dude who's just pacing walking in circles and just coming over and just quickly like walking almost where we are this close to each other and just like peeking in the van and just like just continuing with this tiny circle that he's making around us very unnerving yeah i think he might have had a club foot that's why he was walking in circles Mm. it's the hottest nightclub in florida Yeah, so uh, we film shit at all of these places, and I can't wait for people to see it, especially the Aileen Warnos video. Jake and John deserve Oscars for what they did in front of that camera that night. Something tells me that this will disqualify both of us from ever being nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. Oh, man. and John, uh, John um, I'm not going to say what you did in my mother's name. They'll find out. <laughs> but, dude, the way that you two looked, just, mm. You still have those wigs? I do. I think I do. Why, why don't we pop, Wait, did Danny, did why don't we pop them, them on? Yeah, they're here. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably just wear mine home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should I do my set at the punchline tonight wearing it? Oh, that would look so good. That would be fucking awesome. Yeah. That would rule. <laughs> Yeah, we had to go to Walmart to buy specific uh, outfits for this, and uh, I give Jake the most credit because Jake, you you put, you tried yours on, dude. Mine was accidental. What do you mean accidental? I thought we were just doing stuff in the room. Well, you did wear it. You texted us out of the doing. fitting room in Walmart. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you were willing to wear it in public. Dude, I I, I don't know. I wish I could di- divulge more, but when you see this. It's going to ruin your day. <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, I don't know. Everything about this, everything about this fucking video that we're going to put out is going to give you a stomach ache. <laughs> That's patreon.com <laughs> slash little <stickers. laughs> But some of you perverts are going to fucking love it. So, Jake, I'm glad you're back from Disney, buddy. Yeah, I missed you guys. Missed yeah. you too. And it was Disney. Mm hmm. I can't wait to never go back See to Florida. There. I can't believe you hate Florida, man. You can't? No. I o- Open your fucking eyeballs next time you're down there, dude. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> I was looking through my last Florida pictures when I was in the Everglades, and I have a bunch of pictures of crocodiles or alligators oh, really? in my phone. Sounds I, exciting. Oh, my God. Take some. Oh, my God. What, what a fucking dickhead. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, and I brought this up on the Helium Live show, but I got to see John's third and fourth nipples, and... Dude, the fact the fact that you even tout those as nipples is mind-boggling to me. Yeah, that's, that's an oversell, dude. That's a birthmark. You guys can both suck my nipples. <laughs> and they're just as sensitive as the... If not more sensitive than my main, than my main pair. They're... <laughs> Are they just <laughs> They're your auxiliary nipples. <laughs> Point to your nipples. Are you getting okay. <laughs> John man? Have your other nipples started to sag with age? No. No. Mm-mm. Have you ever had a lady suck on your third fourth <laughs> nipples? Uh, just I, rubbing your happened. chest like this. Yeah. <laughs> then when that bitch does foreplay, she does a play with him. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, man. I'm, I'm listen. I I hold nothing back in our friendship, and I I let you know when you do something good, and I let you know when you do something bad. And you did something bad by having four, four nipples nip- that you don't you're not in love with. Well, you got two nipples. And you got not, two fucking weird things on you. There's not. <laughs> that's what nipples are, brother. Those are inverted skin tags. Look, inverted look at four nipples. There, nobody has four actual full area milkers, oh, man. Huh? You got to think of a different name for them because those are not nipples. You a wanted, doctor like, told me they were nipples, Mike. Yeah? Yeah. Doctor tells you you believe him? Everything he says? Yeah. <laughs> Everything. I'd get a second opinion on those All right, nipples. I'm going to medical school. Wait till you see what I tell this motherfucker in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> What's the easiest doctor to become? <sighs> Podiatrist? What? I was going to say foot doctor. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say chiropractor because you could still call yourself doctor, but you Damn. Know, you're just a guy who does wrestling moves on people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even qualify c- c- chiropractor as a real doctor. Um, could you get a doctor in like business or something? Whatever your degree is, just keep ooh, going. Oh, yeah. That That's might the be quickest the way to there. Cut route. Actually, yeah, it's uh, a different... chiropractors aren't medical doctors. They're just, they just call themselves doctor. They're right? just doctor <laughs> of chiropractic. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's like calling, that's my route. Calling yourself like a doctor of sales. How quickly do you think I could get my um, doctorate in chiropractic? In America? Yes. I Six think you, I think you should go. Bo- How about broad. India? Yeah, I think. All right, three months. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go to India and then I'm gonna tell you everything that you have to believe, considering you're so fucking hell bent on believing everything that doctor. Look, I got you. a, I got, a, I'm a doctor Thanks. and I got a certificate. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to wrap it up. It is indeed. We've ended on a sour note. <laughs> John and I are at odds. You guys want popcorn? Yeah, I would like more, Jake. Thank you to those of us who joined us uh, on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a patron yet, but Thank you would like you to have to some... those of us who joined <laughs> us? What? That's Pass- what you just said. No, I didn't. Did he? Play what did back, I just say? Thank you for those of us who's joined Thank us. Thank you for those of us who have joined us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those of you that have joined us on Patreon.com. Uh, your support means everything to us, and it's because of that we're able to do this, and uh, we have a nice new place, and we're able to take these fucking yes. re- retard field trips. Thanks, Good Boy Studios. And if you're not a patron yet, you can go to Patreon.com slash Lil Stinkers, L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. We pay either 4 bucks a month or $40 for the year. They have early access to everything. Um, all the extra shit we do. Um, we got to do an AMA yeah. this month. We have to do a mini stinkers episode this month. All right. Damn, and we we're gonna, we're, I'm going to let you guys know what the times and dates are for that shit, but you get all that stuff in, in addition to um, early access to the episodes by becoming a patron on Little Stinkers. Jake, is there something that you could do for our patrons that would really entice them? What would they want from me? Oh, brother, you'd be surprised. Maybe lie about having a third and fourth nipple. That, that's a good start. Oh, man, they don't want to see my nipples. I do. I think I want to get breast implants in the middle of my stomach <laughs> to match the rack I have on top. All right, next tier of our Patreon is Jake getting <laughs> no. implants. You, the fans, decide what size he's going to get. God, I shouldn't have said anything. I'm teasing. Uh, I will. Can I say? Um, yeah, Danny Dubs has been doing a great job. This is a yes, he has. studio he has. He has a Crushing Instagram his page. Uh, he's going to be po- posting a lot more clips on it. So it would be good if you guys. Want to give Danny some love? Follow his Instagram page. Good boy. Is it Good Boy Studios, Danny? Uh, Good Boy underscore Comedy. Okay, Good Boy underscore Comedy. So follow that on Instagram. He's got so many new podcasts coming in here too. It's so exciting. There's so yeah, much cool stuff on Perks. All the boys are leveling up. Yeah. If, if you people... haven't bought my book yet, you can go to allperks.com. Pre-order my new book. I'll have the actual copies of the book within a couple of weeks. I cannot fucking wait for that. And uh, a lot of cool things coming up. We're going to actually have a. A book release party, and I'll release the details for that very soon as I finalize those. Man, ton of good shit. What You're you guys still doing the audio book too, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, whenever you guys can record, uh, I want to have it wrapped up within the next ten days or so. I'd love, to, you know, I'd love to do anything. I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll read. I'll send you a couple of practice chapters. Anyway, sounds good. And John, even though we're at odds, I still want to have you read for my book, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you, you know what? That's, don't ever do that to me. I will. I think the reason why he said those of us. Thanks. What did he say? All of us. What? Thank you for those of us who's been joining us. Uh, <laughs> I want to defend Mike because he doesn't view you as you. 
he we're he equals, does, baby. Yeah, exactly. We're on you're, the same page. We're in the family. Yes. If you're listening and you're watching and you're still here at this point in the show yeah. episode, we're family. So speaking of the family, ooh. I found out an interesting aspect of Charles Manson's funeral today. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Mike? Uh, Charles Manson. Uh, do you know how he started that um, his own organization called Atwa? It was like. Fucking air, something, water, and animals. I remember you vaguely talking about this, yeah. He did, but he he was a uh, an environmentalist you. and an animal lover, and he was buried in an Atwa t-shirt. Can you get the same one still today? I can, although as thick as I've gotten, they'd probably give me a Fatwa t-shirt. All right. <laughs> we'll <fucking laughs> see you guys perfect. next time. Bye, thank <laughs> you. See you guys.